from Washington, this is VOA News. Egypt holds a constitutional referendum vote. More anti-government protests in Bangkok. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Egyptians vote for a second day today in a referendum on a new constitution supported by the military-backed interim government. Hundreds of thousands of police and soldiers deployed across the country as a two-day vote began Tuesday but that did not stop violence between supporters and opponents of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. The result, eight people killed. While the vote is officially to approve or reject the Constitution, VOA's Elizabeth Aaron in Cairo says it is really seen as a referendum on the man likely to run for president if the Constitution is approved. The country's army chief, who ousted Islamist President Morsi in July. Well, this is the first step in what the interim government calls its roadmap to transition away from the previous government of President Mohamed Morsi, who, of course, was ousted last summer. And so that there's going to be this referendum on the Constitution, followed by presidential and parliamentary votes to sort of reestablish everything. Many people are seeing this really as an endorsement of General Abdel Fattah Sisi, who's the defense minister, who's really the de facto leader here. It's more, it seems to be, whether it's going to be an endorsement of, of the new ruling elite. VOA's Elizabeth Arad in Cairo. The U.N. nuclear agency says talks with Iran and Tehran's nuclear program have been postponed until February 8th. The talks were originally scheduled for January 21st, a day after Iran and world powers are set to begin implementation of an interim nuclear pact reached last November. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is pledging to bring humanitarian aid to Syrian refugees, saying what he's seen at a refugee camp in a Kurdish region of Iraq is heartbreaking. Mr. Bond made the comments during a visit to a camp near Erbil Tuesday in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, where the local government is hosting more than 200,000 refugees from Syria. Mr. Bond plans to convene a humanitarian assistance conference today in Kuwait, ahead of next week's International Peace Conference in Geneva. Thailand's Prime Minister Yinlok Shinawat says she will not give in to opposition demands to resign despite two days of large anti-government protest in Bangkok. Mrs. Yinglok says she has a constitutional duty to stay on as Prime Minister and that only cooperation and dialogue can resolve the country's months-long political deadlock. She spoke as thousands of opposition protesters filled Bangkok streets for a second day. South Sudan's military says at least 200 people trying to flee fighting in the country's north were killed when their boats sank in the White Nile River. An army spokesman says the boat sank as the passengers, most of them women and children, were fleeing the town of Malakal. Rebels fighting South Sudan's government for the past month say they've captured the town, the capital of Upper Nile State. A government spokesman denies the report. Political leaders in the Central African Republic have begun a search for a new president four days after interim leader Michel Jatoya was forced to resign. The council has two weeks to make its choice. He stepped down after failing to stop violence. It's killed more than 1,000 people and displaced more than one million from their homes. A new U.N. report from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights presents an appalling picture in the Central African Republic. Lisa Schlein has details. U.N. fact-finders who visited the CAR last month have confirmed there were large-scale killings of Christian and Muslim civilians carried out on December 5th and 6th in Bangui and Bosangoa. The U.N. estimates 1,000 people in Bangui alone were killed during the two days of violence. Besides the killings and subsequent retaliatory attacks, the UN mission says it has received multiple accounts of sexual violence 
torture, and forced disappearances, arbitrary arrest, and detention. The report also documents widespread looting and property destruction, including deliberate burning of civilian homes and the burning of churches and mosques. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. A car bomb explosion in northern Nigeria killed at least 17 people Tuesday. It happened in a busy area of Maiduguri, the capital of Borno State. There's been no claim of responsibility. Negotiators in the U.S. House of Representatives and Senate have reached agreement on a trillion-dollar budget that would fund the federal government through September. It's a deal that potentially avoids another government shutdown. President Obama says he's very pleased, and he's urging Congress to quickly pass the compromise. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.